Hello. Hi, guys. Welcome. I'm Candy Michael from Powell, Ohio. And I'm going to be showing you a fun project today. We're going to make a card. And I'm going to show you how to make... forgot to put the candy in there. It's a good thing I didn't eat it. A cute little uh, candy treat using some of the shaving cream techniques and some of our fun Stampin' Up! reinkers. So I'll show you a card and then this cute treat. So thanks again for joining me. This is going to be the shaving cream technique. If you haven't done it, it is super fun. So I had someone ask me last week, what do you do with your reinkers? Because sometimes I don't use them as often or I'm using other colors and I don't tend to go with specific colors. And I said, oh my gosh, there's tons of techniques out there. So I promised her I would show her, this is for you, Steph. I would show her at least one of the techniques, which today I'm gonna to show you shaving cream technique. Hi, Jessica, thanks for joining me. So I pre-did a couple of my um, pieces to play with, but I'm going to actually show you what I did. So have you ever done the shaving cream technique? Let me know, raise your hand. Hi ladies, thanks for joining. I see a few of you joining right now. Um, but raise your hand or let me know, yes, you have or no, you've never even heard of it. It's kind of a fun thing. I have not done it in years, so I had to go back and play and make sure I remembered how. I'm going to use our Stampin' Up! Bewitching Bundle, and this stamp um, bundle is a punch bundle. So I'm going to be using the punch along with the stamps. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Deb, you have done it. Well, cool. Has it been a while since you've done it? Because I know it's been a long time for me. All right. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to make a mess. <laughs> so I, I always tell everybody, have your paper towels handy or and or some wipes handy because you are definitely going to need them. I love this. It was really, really fun bringing this back out. So let's get, let's get going. Let's get, let's get uh, our shaving cream technique on the move. So I'm going to use the um, witch's hat and I decided I like this one. It showed more of the background once I stamp. So what I'm doing here is creating this paper and it's gonna be a background paper and then I'm gonna actually stamp on it and punch it out. So you, depending on your colors that you use and even depending each time you dip, it's gonna come out very, very differently. So let me get all of my stuff out of the way. I do have a website, candystampers.com and an August host code. So if you'd like to place an order today, here you go. Also, celebration, quick quick uh, plug in here. Celebration will be over at the end of August. So every $50 before tax and shipping, you will get a free item out of the book. So there's also another pamphlet that we have as they've added some more products because a few of them had already retired, not retired, but ran out. Okay guys, so what I'm going to use here is just your basic paper plate, but this does have like a, you know, the colored coating on it. The regular paper will, you'll see that this is still kind of wet from me playing earlier, but regular paper, it'll just kind of soak in. So I suggest having one with the coating, but you want something that you're gonna be able to just throw away afterwards. So this is the fun part. I ran to the store and bought just an inexpensive can of um, shaving cream or one that's on sale, I should say, because you don't need to have a lot. A little bit will go a long way. So let me just put a little bit on here and it'll literally keep growing. <laughs> it just kind of spreads out and grows. So I'm using some of our little Stampin' Up! Um, tools that we use for our paste. These are great. And I'm just going to flatten it out. Now, this is actually even a lot to be using, but it doesn't matter because I have a whole can full. And if you decide you spray way too much, I actually 
actually took half of it earlier and scraped it off and I put it onto another plate and it'll last for a while, a long while. Like I was able to do a couple of things and come back to it and it was still just firm, firm old um, shaving cream. But I'm gonna start with this. And because I'm working with the hat, I want it to be about like my, my paper scrap. I wanted it to be about the size of my hat. So if you have a bigger image, you might need to have more shaving cream, but this is going to fit right on top and then I'm gonna stamp this later. Okay. I don't know what would happen if I stamped it first. Well, you know what? Let's try it because I stamped it later and had to wait for it to dry. So instead, let me try it this way. And if it's an epic fail, then you'll know not to do it next time. But let's give it a whirl. Why not? Let's get daring. Daring, daring. So I'm going to simply stamp the image first and then I'll tell you if this works or not. <laughs> so we're gonna try it this way. Okay. So with the shaving cream, I've chosen to use, um, this little thing is gonna be in my way, let me move it. So I'm going to use our pumpkin pie and I'm going to keep it closer together. The first ones I played with, I really spread them out and it was, it's not bad, it's just it left a lot of white space. So I decided with this one, um, I use the Highland Heather on this treat but I'm gonna go a little darker but on the treat you can see the Highland Heather on there it's really a cute and just a light hint of purple but I decided for this one let's go ahead and go with some gorgeous grape and it's just a random you know I really didn't count the numbers or anything of dots one two three four five that was like seven and then I'm adding granny apple I was going to do the parakeet, which is the new in color, but I think it's packed in my bag from my last retreat that I was at, and I didn't have time to go get it. Okay, so now we have your mixture of colors, and of course, because this is Halloween, I wanted some more Halloween colors. So if you've ever made a cake and marbled your cake, that's what you basically are doing with the shaving cream. You don't want to mix it too much or it'll become really muddy, really muddy. And I think even if you use too much ink, it might become kind of muddy. So we'll see how well I do. But really just a few little things. And then you can pull it out if you want it to go further or you want any weird looking designs on your paper because it'll kind of show. All right. Now. I did do this one time with the bone folder and left it sitting in here and all of the ink will actually transfer and it'll make a bone folder design. So if that's something that interests you, you can just leave it in there. So this is what I'm gonna start with. So let's try this and see if it works with our stamped image. So I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to pat it out, make sure I kind of get my sides and then pull it off. Now, if I didn't tell you this was messy, this is messy. And I went way too dark with that, with that great, uh, gorgeous grape. So you can't see my element there. But that is basically the technique, and then you would stamp over the top. So let me bring back one that I did earlier, and I don't think it's quite as dark. So let's try this one, and then we'll stamp on it, because that one... Epic fail, but never fear. I had a couple done ahead of time because I was just playing and I needed them to be dry because they do take a few minutes to dry. Oops, I got to get that ink off of me. So let's hope that this one works out. All I need to do is stamp this on here and I know it'll fit, but I want it to be in this shape. I think it has to go this way because I need it to fit my punch. There we go. It's still pretty dark, but once we punch it out, let's see what it looks like. So maybe lighter colors are better. This image is a pretty light lined. It's not like a super bold stamp. So it might be 
come on, move up there. It might be um, that fine line, but let's see. Now, I'm going to keep this scrap because I'm gonna show you what I did with part of that scrap. So you can see the hat. This one's a little bit darker than I really wanted. So let's maybe do a different one that's not so dark. I think I just put too much ink on there. And that can happen if you put too much ink. All right, let's clean off my little knife. I do have some baby wipes with me because I know I can make a mess. So let's do that again and I'll go with some lighter colors. Oops, again, that's a lot of shaving cream. And then when I'm all done with it, you I just scraped my plate off afterwards, wiped it with a paper towel and did a whole another batch. And I'll show you how you can double dip. So we're gonna try this again. And this time I won't put as much on there. So, because the orange is pretty dark. Come on, one, two, three. I'll just do like five of those. No, no great. We're gonna go with the Highlander, Highland. Highlander is my car. This is called Highland. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, and then, again, I may be putting too much, but let's see. And I just need a hint of green. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see how that does. Little bit of this, little bit of that. This is when you get to be the mad scientist. So again, I'm going to just kind of like marbling a cake. And it was kind of nice when I did my first um, sample ones earlier that I did have some white in there because it just, it made it so it wasn't so dark. And then, well, let's try that. Looks like there's quite a bit of white. So I have a ton of these pieces that I cut out, just some scraps, whatever size your, your image is. And again, you're just gonna pat it in and pull it off and let's see if it's a little lighter to stamp on and just scrape all that off look it kind of gives it that image that you had in the um in the actual shaving cream like that same thing it's just transferring it all now when i was done with this part this is much better it's it's a much lighter background i actually had a napkin here that i'm just going to or a paper towel and just kind of lightly pat pat oh my gosh my mouth isn't working pat or like just rub it off and you'll see that it's good to go so I'll, it'll dry for a quick second but i want to show you let's double dip and let's go this way oh maybe this was the way i went before who knows and let's just tap it in there and pull it out. Ooh, I like it. Now, one of the things I had noticed when I was playing earlier as well is there's a lot of white down there and if I want it to be usable for scraps, you can just dab it back in there. Pull up some more of the ink colors. Look at that, it'll catch it. Isn't that cool? Now, when I was using my paper towel to dab this off, the other thing I was thinking of is if you guys are still getting um, phone books. I do still get phone books and sometimes I'll keep them for my crafts because I normally look everything up online so or on my phone. So my phone books are great to use for something like this where you just put it in there, wipe, pat it off and then pull it out and it will still um, kind of dry it all off for you at the same time. So here's our two images. These are much lighter and going to work a little bit better than this one. It's a little dark. And if you do too much of this, then it becomes super muddy. So you don't wanna have, like you could see from me just scraping it all off how muddy it is. Kind of looks yucky. But some of us consider it art. <laughs> it's all in your outlook, right? So I'm going to set this aside so we can um, play. And I'm all good. My hands are going to be very muddy and dirty. So if that bothers you, 
and you guys just have to look at it. <laughs> Sorry. But you can wear gloves when you do this. It's just the reinkers are going to stick to your fingers. But again, this is art, so it doesn't bother me. All right. I am going to let's go ahead and get the card started and I'll give those a few minutes to dry. So our card base is going to be black. And let me grab this piece of scrap. It's going to be black. Let me make sure it's in the camera. There we go. Put these over here. And it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. I do have a white inside. And you know, after I had made this and was getting ready to go live, there are no words in this stamp set. So if you have any, either Halloween or anybody that has a birthday on Halloween that you wanted to use that for, you can always find some from another stamp set, or I know we have several of them. And I just did not bring it over here, so mine's going to be wordless. <laughs> just saying, it's going to be wordless. And most of you know I'm never short for words, so... Ha, ha, ha. So let's go ahead and just glue this on the middle. But I can stamp this darling, darling, darling. Well, we can stamp this hat inside too. Why not? Why not? Let's give it something in here. It can't be blank. Let's do that and let's stamp the cute little spider. The spider is adorable. Now let's see if I can make this work. Oh, I'll close my eyes. <gasps> not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. <laughs> So this is going to be our inside. And then if you have any words, birthday or thinking of you or anything fun like that, because really it could be, it is Halloween, but I know I have friends that have birthdays on Halloween and this is perfect. All right. I am going to take my piece and it's actually pretty dry. So let's try stamping on it and then we'll come up with our, our um, image here. La, la, la. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna go in this direction. Mm -mm. Oh, and I put it up really high. And the only reason I say that is I know it's not going to fit in the punch because I had that problem earlier. And let me show you, see, too high. So I should have thought of that and I didn't. So I will just trim a little bit off and try that again. And I can still feel that it's wet, but it'll be all right. And so just, you want to just line it up. And make sure you get all those little scraps out of there so it doesn't jam your punch. And then again, you can keep the little scrap because I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. That one's not so great, but I'll keep it anyway. Makes me feel better. Okay, so that came out pretty good. It's still wet. I could see it kind of did that, but it's cool. We're going to use it. Okay, let's finish building the card, and then we'll go back to our, our little hat. So I have a piece of orange. Pump, I'm sorry. It's orange. Yes, it is orange, but it's called pumpkin pie. Hello. I've only been doing stamping up for 25 years, so... <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think I need oxygen. <laughs> so I cut this piece at an, an eighth marking, but you can do it in quarters. So this is three and seven eighths, oh lordy, by five and an eighth. Okay, so this is going to sit on the front. And then my DSP, my designer series paper, is three and a half by five. So it'll just layer right on top of that. So let's glue this down and get this ready. This is our paper, oh my gosh, this paper is so cool. It is called, and you're not gonna believe what it's called. If you don't know, this is, it's gonna be hard to remember, but it's called black and white 12 by 12. <laughs> it's on page 55 of the uh, mini that we have out right now, black and white. And it was really funny because I was looking for the name so that I could write it down so that I could share that with you. And I started laughing. Of course, I'm here by myself. And I started laughing because I'm like, okay, it's called black and white. 
And I wanted to know what the black and white paper was called. <laughs> I'm telling you, it might be a little warm in this room right now. Okay, so I'm going to now glue this to the front. And la la la. Hey, do you guys ha know any, have any friends or relatives that are born on Halloween? Let me know. I always, it's always interesting when, you know, people, I mean, every day is a holiday kind of sort of anyway, but Halloween is a, is a fun one. I have a, my niece is going to have a baby and that's when the babies do is Halloween. So I hope she has a Halloween baby. How fun would that be? Of course, the first year you have to dress them up like a little pumpkin. <laughs> All right, next I'm going to use our stylus shapes and I cut out the uh, square. And this one is la, 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 about two and three eighths by two and three eighths. And then what I did was just cut a piece um, to fit behind it. And I don't know if I did this one. It's two and a half by two and a half. So just so you have a little bit of the orange showing. That's what we're going to put on the front here. But before I do that, I need to do my stamping. So let me set this aside. Remove the white so that you can see it. Here, we're going to stamp the cute little feet. <clears throat> These are adorable. And I want this to fit so that it's up a little bit higher than normal. I'm going to add a ribbon down here. So I'm going to stamp it up a little bit higher, not right at the bottom. This is just the way. Ugh. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I didn't mean to hide the hat. So this one, because our stamp is more of a, like a bolder, thick stamp, you could see that it didn't ink well there. So make sure on these that you really... I mean, I have a lot of ink on here. I just need to get it inked well. Can you see that? And I'm all about having it inked right. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it up a little closer to the top, right about, right about there. And then just make sure you always hold your stamp and press firmly into the center and the sides. Voila! Ugh! I hate when I get a shadow, but I did not cut another piece, so we are going with this. I got too aggressive with it. Oh well, it's all good. This is gonna be hidden because of the hat, but that is not. So just saying, we all make mistakes, but it's just art, right? Okay. So I want to go ahead, I'm gonna just go ahead and glue this down and pretend that the tip of her boot doesn't have a blemish. I'm moving on, Candy, move on. Don't dwell. Don't dwell, it's all okay. All right, so this was a fun idea that I had. And I'm going to take my scrap and think it doesn't matter it doesn't matter I'm just going to use a scrap here so I have my let me see if I have a scrap it's not a big giant mess mm, this I'll just use another square so I'm going to take my stockings and stamp them so I only need to get the stockings itself because I want them to match the hat now, if you don't want that, you don't have to do that, but I just thought it would be something fun and different. So I'm gonna just stamp it on that scrap piece and that's why I was saying to keep that scrap. Now, if that one's too dark, the other thing we can do is, because I had to do this earlier, is you can always do one and then go back and do another one on another piece of scrap, but bleh. I don't like either of those. So it's a good thing that I already cut some out from another scrap that I had because they came out really cute. So let's try this instead. So I cut them out. Oops, I dropped one along the way. And then 
all I did, all I'm going to do is just line them up over the top to give them a little more color. You can color them in with a marker, of course, but I thought this was kind of a fun use of that scrap you're going to have left over. So here are the stockings. And I have to tell you guys, I was not going to buy Halloween stuff. I just, I wasn't going to. I wasn't feeling it. And then I started seeing all these adorable cards and little gift bags and everything made out of this stamp bundle. And I said to myself, self, I think you need that. So I ordered it. And I'm glad I did because now I can share it with you guys. <laughs> Yes. All right. I decided that I thought a cute piece of ribbon would go very nicely down here. And I'm just going to tie it with a knot. I'm not doing a bow, just a knot. And I probably should have colored in those buckles first, but it's all right. Just go this way. Okay. And then you can always like spin your ribbon around, make it fit where you want. Alrighty, because I did put that on, let me go ahead and color in the buckle. And we're just going to use some pumpkin pie, or as I referred to it earlier, orange. <laughs> Even though I do know my colors, my stamping up colors. Okay, there, not bad. So I use our, our um, Stampin' Blends. These are the alcohol-based markers. You do have a thicker tip with the brush side, and then you have a thin line tip. So if you were worried about going out, it's a little easier to use as well. And you can use blends when you're coloring in your stockings, but I thought this would be such a fun idea. So next we're going to add on our little hat, but let's, let's come back to our card base. And this is what we have so far. So now I want to trim my ribbon. Let me pull that tightly so that it cuts. Ooh, nice. All right, ribbon. My ribbon doesn't want to cooperate. Very nice ribbon. I love this gingham check ribbon. Okay, there we go. So let's pop, let's see, lay this flat and then we're gonna pop up the hat. How's that? Lay this flat and pop up the hat. So let's give that a try. All right, got my glue. I love our mono adhesive glue because I can put this down and then I can move it if I need to move it around. So get that down there. That looks straight. I think so. Next, our little hat will pop up here. And that one, I will actually put dimensionals on it. So I am using our black, our regular dimensionals. We do have some that are smaller and they're called our mini dimensionals. But these are the regular size and these are the black ones. So the black ones are $6 for the pack, but you get two sheets that are this size and two sheets that are the mini. So you actually get four sheets of dimensionals in there. Let's pop this up right about there. Oh, isn't that fun? Look at that, how cute that came out. All right, the other thing I had was, I thought I had a smaller one. Oh, Kenzie, Kenzie, Kenzie. Let me, no, it's good. It's all good. My scrap of white is right here and I am going to stamp another little um, spider. My goodness, where is my mind today? I don't know. There we go. That came out cute. I'm going to give that a quick second to dry because I did one earlier and I smeared it everywhere. But I'm going to just hand cut this out and then pop it up with another dimensional 
and it'll go right at the tip of that hat, which is super adorable. And I just don't want to get ink everywhere. So I'm trying really hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. To not smear it. And to kind of make it look fancy. There we go. Except for, I don't know if you guys are like me, but that line is just too straight. There. See the cute little Spidey? And this little guy can have a dimensional on the back. And I think a big one will fit. Oh, candy. Maybe you need a little one. I have them all stacked up here next to me, but do I have them like on the table? No. Here, I'll use a little one. That will be smarter. These are the minis. These minis are great. Okay. Is it all coming together? Can you see my little vision here? So this is gonna fit underneath, but the only thing I don't have is I don't have glue on that, but that's all right. Let's just pop that up there, kind of spin it. And there's our fun fold, I'm not our fun fold, oh my gosh. Our fun card with using the um, shaving cream technique. And don't you love the little stockings? I thought those were super cute. Now we could add some little uh, embellishments on that. Of course, didn't think of that either, but I have a whole bunch right here. So let's do that really quick. Really quickly. And then I'm gonna show you the little treat. Um, candy treat that we have on. Oh my gosh so these are our classic matte dots i love these <clears throat> we have white vanilla gray and black and as you see i use them a lot a lot a lot love them are those white i think i have the ones that oh i did have the vanilla ones haha -ha. you have to watch that oh you do need to see that under there don't you i have my pick a tool here Take a pick, take a tool. Oh my God, forget it. It's my little tool from stamping up. <laughs> I do not know where my mind is right now, but it's obviously left the room. I'm sure that none of you have days like that. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Come on, little guy. Oh uh, no, we'll just come down here. Aww. There you go. Oh my God, I'm turning it like I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> you know, it's all all right. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Here was another paper that I was thinking of using, this DSP, but I just didn't like it with the different lines in there. So I changed it up. Oh, I forgot to show you what I wanted to do on the hat. So on the hat, she has a little, the witch's hat has a little area for her um, little rim around it. And I wanted to do, we can add a little piece of purple on there. Let's bring the purple out. So what I did was I ran this through our, I ran a piece of the Highland Heather DSP or cardstock right through here. And this is our splatter embossing folder and then what you can do is just sit here and punch them out so you i did orange or i did the heather and i think the this one came out good but when i put it on here let's see how that looks well that one doesn't look bad on my little treat bag let me show you on here although i realized i bumped it after on the treat bag when i did it i did add i punched out another piece and cut it in half and just to give it a little bit of a rim on there but that part got tucked in i'll show you how to do that when i make it but i think this one looks pretty good just like that so i'm going to add a little bit of glue and make it a very sticky situation there we go oh come on over 
There, now it's done. Isn't that adorable? Just a fun little card. These are actually not too hard to make and you could do this with any kind of an image on the front. But I really wanted to show you how to do the um, shaving cream technique. So with that, I'm going to take a couple other um, of the pieces that we dipped our dipping stuff and we're going to make this little treat bag. So Stampin' Up! has this darling die that's a mini pocket envelope. And if you haven't seen them yet, this is how how small it is. It's, it's very cute. You can make it a gift card holder or whatever, but it's very tiny. It's five, five by like four and a quarter by the time you get the bottom and everything. So five by like, yeah, four and a quarter I think would do it. And this is what it looks like when it's all cut out like that. Super cute, little bit of designer paper and you guys can make a ton of treats for friends. It could be anything, it can be birthday treats, it could be, you know, of course Halloween or anything that you wanna do, shower gifts, just a little tiny treat. And this is what we're going to make, so I'll show you. And then the uh, Reese's peanut butter pumpkins fit in there very nicely so you can see the size of that. So I'm going to go ahead and fold on these score lines. It is nice to use your bone folder on here so you get it nice and straight and you get those folded score lines down evenly. La la la. And then, now we need to glue it. You can use your terrible tape, which I love, or you can use the um, multi-liquid glue. So, I think I'm gonna try the multi-liquid glue because I'm feeling really daring right now. But you don't wanna put too much because you don't wanna have that squish factor, like it coming out everywhere. Because then you'll have an ooey gooey sticky mess. Just nice, a nice little line down the center and you don't need a ton. That's the nice thing about this glue is you can um, control the pressure. And then just put it together. Let's put it together. All right, so while this, and I saw this little tip from Chris Slogar. Thanks, Chris. We'll let it dry. <laughs> So after that, we're going to go ahead and build with our um, with our uh, punch. So I'm going to take another one of these pieces. And I need, oh, I have one already right here. Look at that. I was already way ahead of the game. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp a hat, another hat. So we're going to ink it up, inky-dinky-doo. And I'm going to actually do both of them because why not? Why not? Hopefully I got that. I thought I double skipped it, but so that one's out and this one's in. <laughs> Let's go with this one. I like it. So again, I think I stamped it up too high. I'm going to have to cut part of it off here so that my punch will fit. And we can put the punch in. And if you ever do this where you can barely not reach it or you can reach it, you can use a, a post-it note and put it on the end and make like an extension. And then it, you can slide your piece in so it makes like a longer piece of paper. It's a great idea and it works very well. But I don't have a post-it note next to me, so I'm not using it. Okay, that one came out nicely. Next, we're gonna go ahead and bring our little gift bag back. And I have die cut out with our stylish shapes, the smaller two circles. I believe these are the smallest of the two. And I'm basically going to put them on here and kind of layer them, but I'm gonna wait and do this one. I'll put it here so we can see it. I'm gonna do that other one last. So I want, you'll see my little hat here. I want the hat 
to be able to hang, but I wanna put the little spider down. So I did kind of move this over just a smidge. I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on here. Oops. And I did kind of pull that to the side. But because that's going to be up higher, there we go. That's super cute. Then I want to stamp another spider. Come here, little spider. And I will then cut this one out. Nice. I am going to pop this up. Let me let that ink dry for a second on that one so I don't smear in my little spider. But let's go ahead and pop this up with our dimensionals. Right there. And then this one will come up here like so. Yep, yeah, looks good. Perfect. All right, let's cut this out. Do our little spider cut. You know, sometimes cutting can be very therapeutic. Not always. And most of you that know me know I really don't like to cut. <laughs> <laughs> but I will admit this spider is stinking cute. So I don't mind cutting the cute little spider because it is adorable and it's not a lot of cutting, right? It's just a small little amount. So who can complain about that? So I'm going to use a little dimensional again. And with this one, what I want to do is... I actually didn't want to put the dimensional on there. I wanted to put it on my circle. So I need a big dimensional on my back of my circle because I'm going to pop this up. And what I thought would be really cool would be to get this dimensional off of me. This is would be to um, glue this on first. Now, this will be a little bit longer, so I just need to snip off a little dot or two. And then this guy is going to get a glue dot. It'll be easier with a glue dot. So we're going to glue dot our spider right on here, just like so. And now I can line this up. I'm going to have to do it upside down because I'm right-handed and otherwise it feels awkwardly backwards. There we go. Just pop our little spider up, hanging right, hanging and dangling right from the top there. Isn't that adorable? Okay, now we need to finish this off. So let's do this with an orange little banner and I'm almost done. This is taking me a long time. I didn't think it would take me this long, but it's all right. So I have the orange band that I'm going to use, but I also told you about punching out a piece of black. So it makes that orange pop out a little bit more. So let's try this. What I did was once I know which direction everything is going, I am very messy. I will have to admit, I am like the messiest crafter ever. Don't want to see the rest of my room. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to make that look neat. So with this piece that's punched out, I want to make sure I have it in the right direction. So that's going to go like that. This is going to be the bottom. So I'm just going to cut this right in the middle. Okay, so that should be the bottom if I didn't mess that up. Oh, let me get this piece of paper here and see if that is right. Yes. And then this one should go across the top. So the easiest way that I found to do that was to go ahead and put a piece of, I use the terrible tape. You can use your, um, your glue, whatever works. I changed my mind. 
because I can. Let me come up here, sorry. I don't know if it's in the camera, but I just need to get a little bit of glue down here to put those little tiny pieces on. And this will just give us a little bit of color on that. Oopsie, you need to stay. Okay, let's see if I can do this without making like this huge mess. A small mess is okay. A huge mess is not. There, it's getting there. Okay, now that I have glue everywhere, let's put it where I really need it, and that would be on this project. <gasps> See, it's stuck to my finger. <laughs> oh, sometimes I'm so entertaining, even to myself. All right. See, I did the same, though. It went down underneath there. Come up. Come up. There we go. I just wanted a little bit of that black to show. And I really need to get that stickiness off of me. But you guys kind of get the picture of what I'm trying to, to do here. There we go. Lay down. Stay. Maybe a glue dot would have worked better. But we're there. Okay, almost done couple seconds away so now we have our little candy treat and because this is still kind of drying I'll just go back to this one I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of ribbon and this is the last of my um <laughs> candy show <laughs> if that's what you want to call it that's what I'll call it but I need my scrap of paper this will work so I'm going to use our black blend, and this is the dark basic black. And I'm using our white crinkle seam binding. Let's see, now that I've taken the lid off, let's see how much I need. I just thought I'd put a little bow either down here or up at the top, or even a knot would be great. A knot would be fantastic. So we just kind of measure that out. But what you want to do is this is super easy. You're going to just color your ribbon with our blend. So you could make it orange. You could make it green. Um, you can make it purple. It's really whatever color you want. And it does take a second to dry, but not much. And my fingers are already inky, so what's the difference, right? What? What's the difference? A little more color on my hands. I never would use gloves, but I probably should have. Okay. Now that's done. Let this dry for a quick second. And I'm just laughing because it's five o'clock and I really didn't think this would take this long. But hey, thanks for hanging in there with me. So let's try tying it down here and see if we like it. Just tie a knot. Ugh. Come up here. I want to make sure it's in the camera. And this is a square knot so that it'll lie flat this way. And if you don't want a ribbon on it, you don't have to have a ribbon. But I just thought that was going to be something kind of cute. And then maybe some more words. But really, it's fine without any any kind of little tag, but tags are always nice. Again, I have another stamp set that I did not even think to bring over here to the table, so I wasn't gonna stop and run back and get it. But look at, look at, look at how cute. Do you think it needs the, the knot? Let's pull it up a little bit. Ah, oh, I like that better. And kind of over here. There we go. So that's it, you guys. Those are my projects. Whew. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I hope you enjoy the um, shaving cream technique because it's super duper fun. And I know that there are so many different color combinations that we have with Stampin' Up! and our reinkers. Oh my gosh, you can come up with so many different ideas. 
just just yourself and and have fun with it right so again this was the bewitching bundle and it is on page 57 and i'm laughing because i put my plate with the shaving cream on it and it's kind of damp so, <laughs> so look at my page <sighs> Anyway, it's a very, very cute bundle. And it does have some glitter washi tape, too. Maybe next week I'll play with that. So thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Check out my website and my YouTube channel. And like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And like this page on my Facebook page. Thank you, everyone. Have an awesome week. And I'll see you next week for some more 411 and Stampin' Fun. Thank you. Bye.